All right, well, I'll get started. Let me uh, I'll begin with a word of prayer. I think it's time. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you uh, for this day. I thank you again for this class. Just help us to uh, use the time wisely to glorify you what we do and just understand a little bit more about your creation together, Lord. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so... Um, let me show you guys an example here. So one of the one of the things we haven't talked about yet is um, for functions. There's also <coughs> what are known as casewise defined functions, and so I'll work a few of these um, just so we can get used to them. All right. So example one. Here's the formula, f of x is equal to, parentheses, big curly bracket, 2x and x minus 1. And first case is if x is less than or equal to minus 1. The second case is that if x is greater than minus 1. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate what are the values of this function a little bit and then we're going to decide what its domain and range is and we're going to graph it, okay? So, let's start out with some values. What would f of minus 2 be equal to? You got two choices, right? You could either use this formula or that formula. Which case are we in? Min the top formula. The top formula because minus 2 is less than minus 1. So we have 2 times minus 2, so we get minus 4. Again, my apologies for the hideous Carolina blue. Um, now, if we calculate f of minus 1, what do we get? Which case are we in? Case 1 or case 2 here? Still case 1. Still case 1, the top case, right? So that's 2 times minus 1, which is equal to? Uh, minus 2. All right. Now, what is what is f of 0? The second case. The second case, we plug in 0. So we get 0 minus 1, also known as minus 1. What's f of 1? Again, we're in the second case, so we do 1 minus 1, 0, right? I can, I can do another one, f of 2. 2 minus 1, which is 1. All right. That's more than enough. So from this, I see that the point minus 2, minus 4, um, here's minus 1, minus 2, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, and finally 2, 1. This right here is a point on graph y equals f of x, right? So for each, each one of these calculations, I get information about a point on the graph. So I'll make it graph over here. Let's see here. So um, minus 2, minus 2, minus 4. Roughly speaking, down here. My next point was minus 1, minus 2. That's right here. All right. And then let's see here what happens. Um, zero, uh, 0 minus 1. is there and let's see here one zero would be like over here and two one would be like here so 
So this one's actually kind of neat because the way they made it, um, it looks like that if I plug minus one into the top formula, well, of course, I get minus two. But if I plug minus one into the bottom formula, I also get minus two. So these two ones, this, this, this graph is what's called continuous. And let, let me show you what I mean by that. By that, I mean that I can graph it without really picking up my marker here. So do you notice what's going on here? The, the different cases are actually both a line. We know how to graph those already, right? So you could have graphed, the, um, graphed this function by graphing the different cases separately and just making sure that the line stops where the cases switch over, right? We have a line with slope 2 to the left of minus 1. Then I have a line with slope 1 to the right of minus 1. And there it is, all right? Now, of course, the other thing that I used really to make the graph here was pretty simple which is simply that um, since we're always, like both of the cases are lines, actually after I find two points on each line, then I can just like, you know, connect the dots and draw the line from there, right? Two points, fix a line. All right, enough about this. So you guys tell me, what's the domain, what's the range? Yes, Michael? The domain is negative infinity to infinity. Very good. Anybody care to tell me the range? <coughs> yes, this is all the same as the range. Very good. So that all the, it reaches all y values, it reaches all x values. The domain and the range are both all real numbers. Range. Okay. How come range is f of x? The range. I'm saying the range of f of x is equal to that. Well, I'm going to put down the same domain. Same as domain, that'll work. All right, let's see here. Another example. Let's see here. Um, f of x equal to, this one's got three cases. We've got 2x, we've got minus 2, and we've got x squared minus 2. All right, and the cases are if minus 5 is less than or equal to x is less than minus 1, the next case is if minus 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 0. And the final case is if 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. Okay, so I'm going to start by just evaluating the function at some different points to try to illustrate that. Okay, guys? Of course. So <laughs> I'm, I'll write it up here. You guys see if you can figure it out. What would, let's do f of minus 5. Let's do um, f of <coughs> Oh, I don't know, minus 3. Let's do f of minus 1. Let's do f of, of 0. Let's do f of 1. Let's do f of 2. Let's figure out all these values. Let's see here. So which case are we in to start with here? 2x. Two 2x, two so we do 2 times minus 5, we get minus 10. And I think the next one, minus 3, we're still in the, you know, maybe it's helpful to draw a picture even of what's going on here, right? I can draw a picture 
um, the, 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 you know, the, the instructions, if you will, they're ranging from minus 5, right, um, to minus 1, to 0, all the way over to 2, right? And if you look at it, you've got the 2x formula here, you've got the minus 2 formula there, and you've got the x squared minus 2 formula here. So depending on which case we're in, we'll use the different formula, right? So minus 3, it's like here, right? So I do f of my, so I just do 2 times minus 3, we're in that case, so that's minus 6. Let's see here, minus 1, now we've got to be careful. Minus 1, which case is that in? Negative 2. It's negative 2. Yeah, they, uh, well, they made it, they, they made, they, um, they made it hard to mess this problem up. Like, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't, I would personally make it so these don't join up nice and pretty so that I can tell if the student understands or not. But, yeah, here it wouldn't actually matter if we used case one or case two. Either way, you slice it, you'd get minus two here, right? But technically speaking, we should just do minus two because we're in case two. Um, zero, where's that? F of zero. Negative two. Yeah, negative two. And uh, again, they have arranged it so that the cases match up at the gluing point. That's going to make the graph what's called continuous. Which My first example was continuous. This one's also going to be continuous. I'm going to have to invent a non-continuous one for us here. Seems like the book is being too nice to us. Um, what's f of one? We do 1 squared minus 2, right? Minus 1. And f of 2, we've got 2, squ yeah, two squared minus 2, also known as 2. All right, so. Now we graph. Now we graph. So. <clears throat> uh, my first point was. See what I'm ranging over here. I'll make this minus five. One. So the first point on my graph is minus five, minus ten which is roughly speaking about right here in my picture. Then the next point I have, minus three, minus six, one, two, three. About here. So this was like minus five, was minus six. All right. Um, Let's see here, what's next? Uh, f of minus 1 is minus 2. That's about right here. Minus 1, minus 2. And then f of 0 is minus 2. That's right here. And we continue, let's see here f of 1 is, sorry I lost my place, f of 1 minus 1, stupid, get that out of the way here, f of 1 is minus 1, so that's roughly speaking here, and f of 2 is 2, so approximately there. So I'm not sure how straight my, I mean my, you know, it's always kind of a, I do my best, but you know, I don't always get the counting right here exactly, but that should be a line. And then, so that, that's essentially this part of it. And then when you get to, um, when you get to minus one to zero, you've got a horizontal line 
that's you know coming from y equals to minus 2 which is like this and then what happens from 0 to 2 you're, you're looking at a, a a parabola right and um, what is what is 0 minus 2 for this parabola it's exactly the vertex right so we're actually looking at like just a little segment of the parabola and um, specifically it looks something kind of sort of like this. So this is y equals x squared minus 2 for 0 less than or equal to x less than um, equal to 2. That green part, right? The blue part, just to be clear, is exactly y equals 2x or minus 5 less than or equal to x less than minus 1 and that little red line segment in the middle is, is just y equals minus 2. All right. So what's the top point? I should tell you the top point here perhaps. That kind of matters. What's this point up here? What's the coordinates there? That is, yeah, 2, 2, right. All right, now that we've done all this work, we can easily answer the question, what's the domain and what's the range of this function? So can you guys tell me? The domain is negative 5 oh. to 2. Both of those are included because of this less than or equal to and that greater, you know, both of these, they, they both allow equality, right? <coughs> and what's my range? Starts down, yes, Michael? Negative 5, 2. Oh, negative 10, 2. Negative 10 to 2, yeah, and th there's both, this 2, 2 makes both, both of those have a 2 in them, so yeah. Now this graph is what's called continuous because you can, you can draw it without lifting your marker, right? I can just go case 1 to case 2, smoothly into case 3. This is a continuous graph. Is this also a negative infinity to infinity? No, no. But those, why, why is it this? Well, Michael, you notice that example one, the graph had arrows at the end of the graph because that indicates it goes on and on. And, and the, cases, the, the cases here, the cases for example one, they were, en they were endless. The, you can just keep going and going to the left, you can just keep going and going to the right with the inequalities. So um, we have two equalities between it's, it's stopped. Oh, it's not because there's two, in, it's not because there's three cases. It's just the nature. Let me show you another example. Like another case, we could another example we could have would be something like this: f of x is equal to oh, let us say um, three from minus ten less than x um, less than or equal to um, oh, I don't know zero, and then let's say. Um, x squared plus 4 for 0 less than or equal to x um, less than or equal to 2 and then we'll just do 7 for x greater than 2 and I shouldn't have put an equality here because I've already included up here so fix it so we could try to understand what's the graph of that look like all right So let's, let's do that one, see how it goes. So I'm, I'm spending a fair chunk of class time on these. I don't always do this, but students have had a lot of trouble in past semester on these case-wise defined functions. So I'm just allocating a little bit more air time to them to try to give you guys a nudge in the right direction. Really just have to pay attention to the cases and like follow instructions pretty much, but um, okay, so here, <clears throat> I'm 
I'm going to go straight to the graph. I'm going to go straight to the graph for this one. First of all, we have y equals to 3 from minus 10 to 0, right? So I, I start out, maybe here's minus 10, right? And I have at 3, from 3 all the way over to 0, I just have y equals to 3, minus 10 less than x less than or equal to 0. Okay, that's the, the purple part of the graph, all right? So that's just, you know, case one. Now let me do case two in red. This is y equals x squared plus 4. Well, we know how to graph this already, right? This is a parabola. It starts with a y-intercept of 4. And um, like, so if I had the whole thing, it would look like this, right? Where this intercept is at, is at, is at, is at, is at um, 0, 4, right? But what, what's the deal? I have instructions here. What are the instructions telling me? They're telling me this is only good for 0 less than x less than 2. So my, my dot right here is out of order, right? The, the, the <coughs> open circle. And then what happens when I plug in, if I plug in like um, f, f of 2, what's it equal to? Well, it's equal to 2 squared plus 4, you see? which is 4 plus 4, which is, um, well, it's, it's 8. So this, this character basically goes over to here. And so just to, to illustrate, we just have that. And, and you see the rest of, this, rest of this parabola is not part of the actual graph, right? I was just drawing that for context. <coughs> that's what we have. Yep. Can you walk me through why that's Hold open on. circle uh. again and how it being equal to 2 makes it dark line up, adding up to 8? Two. So I plug in the number 2 into the formula, and I get 2 squared plus 4, but that's 4 plus 4, which is 8. So that tells... Yeah, comes from the inequality because that, it's less than or yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm looking at the edge, the edge case here. So that, that point would actually be 2 comma 8, according to this calculation right here. Okay. Then what? Well, we still have case 3. We still have case 3, which I guess I'll make... Um, Green. I got fine. I'll use the Carolina blue. I know you guys want me to. Uh, what? So what about the third case? Oh, we're getting there. So case three <coughs> is simply y equals to seven. This is a very boring graph. It's a horizontal line, and it's basically just you know, and it's open circle here and like that. It goes on and on. What's that? Oh, no, man. I was thinking 7 was x term, it's y term. It's fine. <coughs> so, Michael, this one, the domain is not a finite interval. Like, the domain goes on and on and on and on and on to the right. However, not to the left, right? I mean, correct. See, the, the left, where, what's the domain here? Let's, start, let's settle that. The domain of f of x equals to what is it? Minus, you said, you said minus 10. Now, is that included or excluded? excluded? Excluded because there's a strict inequality here, right? That's why that's excluded. Minus 10, and then what? Infinity. In, in yep, yeah, to infinity. Now, you got to watch out for this. If I had not, if I had put like strict inequality in both cases, we might have missed a point. Like the domain could be missing a point. That could happen. Didn't happen here. Um, and what's the range? The range of this one's weirder, isn't it? What are the allowed y values? I'll do this one for us. What we've got here is the number three on its lonesome, unioned with the number. 4, not included, 
all the way up to the number 8 included. And that's it. So like the outputs of the function, either you have an output of 3, that happens for every x between minus 10 and 10. And then the red, the red piece covers that y values from 4 all the way up to 8. And that's all you get because the, the whole blue line here doesn't add anything new. It just adds 7, which we already had. Yeah. Yes, Michael? What if 1 is included in case 2? What if 1 is included in case 2? Case what do you mean 1 is included in case 2? So 1 plus 4 equals 5. That is true. 1 plus 4 equals to 5. And that means that this point right here is the point 1, 5. That's true. That would be in case 2. You're not wrong. That's a point on the graph, but... But since 4 is already excluded, it doesn't become what we get until 8. See, this, this, this notation, this is interval notation. This means we're covering all y values between 4 and 8. There's infinitely many numbers in this little thing. Every single real number between 4 and 8. 8 being included, 4 being excluded is in this set. This is interval notation. Which is one of your, one of your, one of the class's favorite notations, I'm told. Like if we could just find a way to make every possible answer have interval notation, that would improve the quality of the course overall, right? Ooh, derivatives of inverse hyperbolic functions. This is exciting, but irrelevant. <laughs> I don't know why that's here, but. Um, all right. So do you guys feel like you have a shot with these case-wise defined functions? Yeah. All right. All right, so <clears throat> let me move on here then. I want to talk to you guys about some standard examples. So we need to know these so basically, here's another way to title this would be graphs to memorize. Um, <clears throat> and by that, I mean you ought to be able to sketch them with minimal, with minimal mental effort. So here's some examples that we quote unquote know, <laughs> right? And I'm not saying you know them already. I'm just saying, hey, let's get to know them. All right, so if you don't know them already, well, that's okay, but let, let, let's, let's, let's learn these. So here we go, let's get started. Um, now, now some of these really you should have already seen before, right? Like, <clears throat> so like number one, <clears throat> um, y equals x squared. Well, you, you know what this is, right? That's this guy, right? Number two, y equals um, the square root of x. Well, that is this, right? Um, three, we can talk about y equals x cubed. Now, that might be new, but the cubic looks something like a sneaky snake like this. So there's y equals x cubed. And I'm just drawing, I'm drawing the coordinate axes each time for, for perspective. Number four, we also have this thing put on its side like this. Now this is y equals to the cube root of x. So honestly, folks, like the pattern here is the same. If you take the x squared graph, right, and you turn it on its side, droop, that's what the curve is. This is half of a parabola turned sideways. That's what this is. Um, but I don't keep both sides because I want a function, right? I want to look at a function. A function has to pass the vertical line test, right? If I, if I kept both, then I would fail the so-called vertical line test, which I don't think I, I meant to draw that. I don't think I've drawn it in here yet, but anyway. More on that later. Let's not get distracted. I do think we need to talk more about the vertical line test in here. Now that, I meant, now that I think about it. 
Now this one here though, if you just take this and you just flip it, it's that picture. This is the cube root function. Another example is y equals 1 over x. This one looks like this. We actually talked about this last time, right? Hyperbola. It's a hyperbola. That's right. Hyperbola turn rotated 45 degrees from like the one we talked about previous part of the course. Um, but yeah, it's a hyperbola. 6 y equals to 1 over x squared. This guy looks like this. So I call this the volcano. Mm -hmm. It's a volcano. Fair enough, this is a rotated hyperbola. If you want to give it a name. This is the cube root. This is the cubic. This is the square function. Square function, right? This is the square root function. These are standard examples. All right? Is there anything else we should add to this list, maybe? Absolute value is a good idea. Yeah, seven. Let's add absolute value to this list. If I can find a spot, I'll add it down here. Y equals absolute value of X. That <coughs> is like a V, right? So if I ask you to graph any of these, you should be able to graph these with like a minimum, with minimal mental effort, okay? But what I want to tell you about now is that we can take these formulas and we can adjust them ever so slightly and we can make all kinds of new graphs. So this is called transformations, graphing by transformations. So how do we graph by transformations? <coughs> well, let me show you. So example four, I guess. So let me give you a theorem first, okay? Um, y equals to f of x plus a constant. It has graph um, given by shifting y equals f of x up c units. Part two of the theorem, y equals to f of x minus a has graph given by shifting y equals f of x right C units. All right. And we're, we're going to, we'll think C greater than zero. All right. If, if the constant that you were up against was, was negative, instead of being up, we'd say down. And instead of saying right, we'd say left. All right. So let me give you an example. So if I'm going to graph y equals the absolute value of x plus 2, how do I do that? So let me show you the process with some like dotted lines, if, you know, if, that, if that's okay. So here's my, my basic example of y equals the absolute value of x, right? And, and what am I doing? I've, I've added 2 to it, right? So what do I do? I just take the graph and I shift it up 2. Just that. Just shift up 2. And so the graph... If it's negative, it goes down. That is right. So this would be y equals absolute value of x plus 2. To illustrate Michael's comment, if I wanted to, I could do this one down here, right? 
there would be y equals absolute value of x minus 2. <clears throat> so far so good? All right. What if we were up against y equals absolute value of x minus 3? So I, I'll, I'll just, as a point of reference, here's my standard y equals absolute value of x graph. I'm going to translate that. Which way? Shift. To the right. Yeah, to the right, three units. So this point, the origin, right? Zero, zero, and I basically just think about moving that. Do, 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 do. Over here, three units, three, zero. And so, there you have it. That's y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. What if instead of x minus 3, I had x plus 3? What would that do? Move to the left. <laughs> Move to the left, right. So that would look like this. Now, listen, anytime you have these kind of things, you can check your work by ch checking something that's like pretty obvious and nice, a nice feature of the graph, right? What's a nice feature of the absolute value graph is where it's, where it's got the, uh, the vertex, right? Where it's got the kink in the graph, the corner. That happens when this is zero. When is this zero? I have to put in what? Three minus three is zero. So that point is three, zero. Now, the other one, what happens? How do I get absolute value of x plus three being zero? I need to put in negative 3. Now, students always get confused about this because, you know, if you're not paying super close attention and you come back to this later, you're like, well, surely if I add 3 to the argument, it must move it to the right. Well, it's just, it's not how it works. There's a difference between shifting the input of the function and shifting the output. They don't work the same. See what I'm talking about? In this theorem, if we shift the output, we just move vertically in the same way. If we add, if it's plus, we go up. If it's minus, we go down. When we shift the input, shifting the input by a negative goes right, whereas shifting the input by a positive goes left. It's because these are different things, input and output. Are we good? All right, let's try a combined concept. Are you guys ready? So example six, what if we were up against y equals two 2 plus 1 over x minus 3 squared. I like to tell a story for one like this. I like to think about it like this. I go, okay, so I start with y equals 1 over x squared. Then I can go to 1 over x minus 3 squared, right? And then I can go, one, uh, I can go 2 plus that. So step one is doing what? <coughs> What's my first arrow? That's a shift right shift. by three. And then my second transformation here, right? I go up by two. Now, as I think about the volcano graph, I'm going to draw this in two separate graphs because I think it's helpful to draw it in two separate graphs, okay? So really, to understand the volcano graph, we should understand there, there are two things that define it. The one thing that defines it is the vertical asymptote in the middle, right? Like this one, x equals to zero is a vertical asymptote, which I just say VA for vertical asymptote. But the volcano graph also has the horizontal asymptote of x equals of y equals to zero. This is a horizontal asymptote for the volcano function, right? Which looks something like this. 
And see, if you take a graph and you shift it vertically or shift it horizontally, you will shift the horizontal and the vertical asymptotes in the same way. Now, if you horizontally shift a graph, the, <laughs> the horizontal asymptote goes nowhere. Like as I move it to the side, the horizontal asymptote just stays right where it is, right? But if I move it up and down, the horizontal asymptote gets moved. So <coughs> long story short here, if I go right by three, right, and I go up by two, my new, um, my new uh, horizontal asymptote is y equals to two. My new vertical asymptote is in fact x equals to three. That's how I think about it. Now, and so the graph then of this thing is like a so. Whee. So it's just a shifted volcano. So far, so good. So. Es bueno? Okay, mi bueno. So next class, I will do, I, I, need to sh I want to spend the rest of class time on the projector, so I'm going to, we'll come, there's more, there more, there's more, to, more of this story, all right? Like past this, <coughs> we can also talk about multiplying a graph by a number, or like multiplying the input by a number, which gives us theorems about vertical stretching or horizontal stretching of the graph. And there's also two other ideas, which is reflecting the graph across the x-axis or the y-axis or through the origin. So we haven't, we haven't gotten to that. Uh, next class, we'll talk about that stuff. But um, I think this is a good place to start. Uh, the, these are the easiest part of it, just the horizontal and vertical shift. So if you can understand this, then that's a really good start. All right? Um, I'm going to put the thing, are you get, are we, are we good? Can I put the thing down? So in the, um, in the homework, there's some problems where it just gives you this like laundry list of examples and it says which one's which. So these are kind of nice, um, nice graphing questions. Just trying are you talking about the mission or the recommended? Talking about the recommended. Should I do the recommended as well? That's up to you, Michael. You do the recommended. It's recommended. You don't have to do it because it's recommended. Uh, because, uh, but I've just given a new strategy to um, to only do the mission. I think it's good to finish the mission first. That is not a bad idea. And then work on other homework. Right. So um, if I've done with all this, then I can do recommend it in my spare time. That sounds like a strategy. Let's see here. Um, that sounds like a great strategy. Thank you. I will eventually find your homework. Give me a second here. Recommended homework. Recommended. Um, we're in week, this is week seven, I think. All right, so here. Here is, we can try our hand at this now. All right, so we can, we can let's talk about some of this terminology because I haven't gotten to, um, oops, I haven't gotten to all the terminology yet. Get my, let me get my laser. Oh man. Oh, there it is. Oh, do you have a cat? <laughs> do I have a cat? <laughs> no, my, uh, my outside cat, it, uh, it ran away. <laughs> my, <laughs> my heart is broken over it. Just asking. Yeah. So sad. No, I. I mean, if I did, I wouldn't for long. Okay, so. <clears throat> All right, let me get to where I can actually read the, the board here. Let me make this slightly bigger for you guys. So the question down here is, which one is the graph of y equals x squared, and what's its domain? So that's kind of a dumb question. Which one's x squared? E, right. And what's its domain? Everything. All right, let's find it. 
let's find an interesting one. Which one is, which one is the graph of, num question number two, which is the graph of y equals, wh which one's the graph of f of x equals absolute value of x? And on what open interval is it increasing? What does open interval mean again? <laughs> open interval is like, you know, open interval, it's like expanding. not, in so G, now, all right guys, so can you guys tell me where is this graph increasing? It's, yeah, it's increasing over here, so from zero to infinity. Um, how about this one? How about part E? Which, where, where is this increasing? Again, from zero to infinity, where is it decreasing? From minus infinity to zero. How about this one? Where is it increasing? Where is it decreasing? It's constant, right? So, it's constant. Um, so, uh, Alright, so there, there's that. Which one of these is the cube root? Can you guys tell me? Uh, oh, H is the cube root. Oh, a. A. Of these graphs, which graph is discon a. which graph is not continuous? A. I think it's B, but... Yeah, it's, it's this one. Whatever this is, right? So apparently B, right? Yeah. yeah. Very good. Michael, did you understand cubic versus cube roots? Do you want to look on the board again at three and four? Because I think you were thinking of three no, roots. No, A right? and H. Yeah, A is the cube root. A, excuse me, A is the cubic, and H is the cube root. Cube root. Let's go down here. It's the next page while we got this out. <coughs> so, where, where is this function continuous? Like how about these ones? Where, on which intervals is this continuous? So basically the point of this is that if you've got a hole in the graph, it's not continuous. See, because in order to graph it, I have to lift up my marker, whoop, to get to the other side. So this would only be continuous on like minus infinity to three not included, and also from three to infinity included. This one would be continuous from like minus infinity to one, and then again from one to infinity, but not on any open interval which includes this point or that point in the interior. So this okay, is continuous again means the graph can be made without lifting the pen. Okay? 12 is continuous. 12 is everywhere continuous. 11 is everywhere continuous. 13 is everywhere continuous. 14 is everywhere continuous. Every, 15 and 16 are the oddballs here. So, yeah. And we already did these today, didn't we? So, yeah. Now these right here are some simple applications of the shifting we talked about. So can we put it into practice? Of course. Which one's x squared plus 2? Uh, B. 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 All right, B, we got it. Yeah. Which one is x squared minus 2? This one, right? Uh, yeah. Ah, sorry, I gave you enough time. Which one is y equals x minus 2 squared plus 1? Let's figure out which one's G. What are we doing here? I think it's the lower one. We shift, we will do what? Shift two to the right and one up. Two to the right and one up. Uh, looks like, sorry, my bad. Oops, wrong way. H. H, Michael's got it, all right. And our last example for today, how about, oh, this is, see, this is what we haven't gotten into yet. Y equals minus X squared. That's, it's that's the flip. That's the thing we need to talk about next class. So that's a good stopping point for us. <clears throat>